Hello, uh, good afternoon and welcome to the uh, the webinar. Thank you very much again for joining. Uh, my name is Neil Taylor. I'm the Senior Trainer at Creative Hut. And for those of you joining us for the first time, just to quickly explain, Creative Hut are actually a STEAM education resource and training provider. Um, so we help um, people to develop what they're doing within all STEAM related areas of the curriculum from early years through to, uh, to higher and further education. And one of our partners in all of that, one of our key partners is absolutely MakeBlock. Um, so for those of you not familiar with MakeBlock yet, what they actually deal in is lots of great hands-on education technology like robotics uh, that you can see on the screen here, which cater for education um, from again early years through to third and higher education. Um, but it's not just robotics resources that they deal in, they deal with dealing in all sorts of great steam technology like 3D printers, uh, laser cutters, and a lot more. And what goes hand in hand with those is their three programming software, which we'll be looking at in more detail uh, during this course, and also curriculum materials to help. Uh, you deliver this uh, in the classroom or at home, wh wh wherever you are. And what they've actually also developed, uh, which is brilliant, is their STEAM on board program. And what this intends to do is really give teachers and end users in general all the support they need um, to, to make the, uh, the use of this effectively again in the classroom or at home. So that means training face to face and online, uh, curriculum materials again, and just any general support they can provide to the end user community. Um, but what they've also developed in recent weeks um, is, as part of this, their Steam Onboard online programming training course, uh, which is completely free of charge and everything that you need to be able to deliver it and work with it, uh, work on it with your pupils is completely free, which is, of course, brilliant with the situation we're currently in. It's not as easy to get our hands on the robotic resources and things like this, but there's a huge amount of work we can still do with our kids. Um, with this course, which just needs access to free programming software and less material. So I'll take a quick recap of exactly what this entails. Again, I know a lot of people uh, will be very familiar with this, but just in case we've got some new people joining, to quickly recap, the online training course consists of 45 uh, minutes, sorry, 12 times 45 minutes lessons, which we are delivering to you as tutorials over the course of four weeks for you to then be able to deliver them to your children or pupils that you're working with. And they are suitable for pupils at both primary and secondary level. Uh, we're recording all of the 12 sessions. So for those joining us part way through, you'll be able to go back and look at the previous ones. Um, and we'll also be sharing all of the lesson materials. So that means the slides, lesson plans, uh, and example programs that you'll need to help you in delivering the lessons. Um, what we'd also encourage you to do, while we are working with MateBlock on delivering this um, ourselves, you can also sign up directly with MateBlock at this link here. Um, it will give you access to further live webinars, which might be a, uh, more suitable times for you. Uh, it'll also again give you access to all the supporting uh, lesson materials like the slides, lesson plans, and example programs. Um, you'll also be encouraged to share the projects and work that you're doing so um, uh, people can check those out. And of course, you'll be able to see what other people are creating and doing. So it's a great way to share best practice and ideas and get some inspiration for other things you can do outside of all of this as well. Uh, and you'll also get the opportunity to provide any feedback. So you can uh, provide um, your thoughts on how you think these courses could be developed or added to or changed um, uh, to, to make them um, uh, better for the future. And that's not just for this, but for the Steam onboard platform as a whole. And then last but not least, you'll also need to make sure you've got access to the MBlock 5 programming software, which all of these courses um, or tutorials and lessons are based on. And that's completely free. Again, you can download it onto tablets, laptops, desktops, and you can also stream it within a browser. Okay, so I've got the link there. Don't worry, you don't need to download it necessarily straight away now. Uh, you can just follow along with uh, everything that I'm talking through and have a go afterwards. Uh, the link to this will also be included in the follow-up email uh, that we send through to you um, where you can access everything you're going to need. Uh, and it was also detailed in the uh, Eventbrite listing, so you should have no problem with accessing that at all. But again, any questions uh, on this, then please let us know. But we are now going to take a look at lesson number six. So this is the, the halfway point um, pretty much for the, the that 12 week uh, uh, tutorial course. And this one is entitled Penalty Kick. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at for lesson number six um, in the online training course. But of course, before we go into the details, 
So that's what we're looking at on that. Um, we will review what we have looked at in the previous lesson. Again, just to make sure, uh, everyone new to this aware, these slides I'm using, these are the exact same slides we'll be making available to you and that you'll be able to use in delivering these lessons to your children, to your pupils, wherever you are. So don't worry about making uh, notes, um, comprehensive and all this, you will get access to all of this after the uh, tutorial. But yeah, just to review, first of all, some of the things that we looked at. So we were looking at um, different um, effects and ways we can control the spikes to get them to interact together. So for those that look, uh, were taking part in lesson number five, um, we were looking at how we could get Panda to take part in a race. So we actually started to look at this block here, the go to X and Y coordinates block, which makes enables us to control exactly where Panda appears at and travels to within that stage area. Um, we're using that in conjunction with their move blocks and the next costume blocks, which made the effects of Panda walking, um, combining those two blocks together. So hopefully that's ringing some bells again for those that are brand new to this, you'll be able to look back at the tutorial on all of this in more detail. Uh, we were also looking at introducing new sprites or friends for Panda to, um, to be with uh, as part of the animation we're looking at. So we're using um, Boy 11 Sprite here um, together with just um, the Say block, uh, the Wait For blocks and the Loop blocks to get it to appear like it was constantly cheering Panda along in the race. And then we were also using uh, different sprites um, with the next costume block and the Say For block. Because uh, as uh, hopefully you remember, some of the sprites have multiple costumes, which helps us to animate them and, and appear like they are moving. So hopefully that's ringing some bells on what we were using in the last lesson. Again, you will be able to look back at the last tutorial, if not, uh, but we will be consolidating and using this in more detail within this new lesson as well. Um, okay, so this is an example of what we're going to be working towards. So again, hopefully you remember that in the last lesson, we had Panther enter their very first running competi competition, um, which he performed extremely well in. Uh, and so Panda was really interested in learning more about other sports that they could get involved in. So Panda actually goes to visit a football field or soccer field, if you are um, based in the US at all, and sees a, a football player called Jordan who was practicing uh, scoring goals. Okay, so Panda's really excited about what um, Jordan's doing on the football field and wants to learn no, more about um, how they can play football and how they can join in for themselves. Okay, so that's the scenario that this lesson is based on. As you can see from this, it's starting to get us to get uh, different sprites to interact with each other as part of the animations that we're creating. So that's uh, what we're going to be working towards and expanding on as part of this lesson. It's simply going to be starting with how we get a ball to be kicked into the goal as part of this uh, football scenario. Okay, so in terms of what we need to start understanding so we can get hands on with this for ourselves, we've uh, one of the first things we need to think about, which we've not actually touched on before, I believe, is changing the size of a sprite. So by default, our sprite's always a certain size um, at size 100, as you can see here. But we can change this within that sprite tab to be whatever size we want to make it more suitable for the animation. So we can just do that within the programming software in this section here. I'll show you this live in the interface in a moment. Um, and basically, yes, yeah, so we, we can then make all the sprites we're working with the appropriate size for what they need to be. So we're starting here to build up that football um, field scenario. So as always, the first thing we need to do is open up that M block scenario, uh, sorry, the M block software. So I'm gonna do that straight away. So let's open up our M block software. It's just take a couple of seconds to load up now. And it should be any second, here we go. Okay, so you can see that first, um, Thing it's asking us to do is create the appropriate background. So we need to find and bring in the football field one background. So again, hopefully remembers this. We need to go back into that, uh, sorry, that background section and click the plus icon here. And again, we've got loads of different backdrops we can um, choose from, but we know we want to use the football field. So you can type into the search and select it like so, hit OK. And straight away, we've got our football field background. But um, as it can, as it's guiding you through here, what we want to do straight away 
away, it starts to change the size of Panda to make it more suitable. And Panda's going to start off as a spectator to what's happening on the football field. So we want to get Panda a safe distance away out of the goal. So I was going to click and drag Panda in that stage area to this bottom left-hand corner, maybe bring up a little bit. So we've got Panda in the left-hand corner now, but it's maybe a little bit too big. So we want to change the size of Panda to actually 50% of what they would usually be. So I'm just typing in the size box here, 50. I'm now just hitting the enter button and you can see straight away, Panda has changed in size, uh, more suitable for what we're doing as part of this animation. Nice and easy, straightforward as that. Okay, uh, next stage is we want to bring in the additional sprites we're going to be working with, as we saw in the example before. So we need our soccer ball, first of all. So I'm just going to add in a new sprite uh, again from the sprite library, which I'm sure you're all familiar with from the previous ones. And so we need the soccer ball here, like so. And you can see again, it's asking us to change the soccer ball size to 50. Um, but also we want to start deciding exactly where the ball needs to be. So hopefully everyone remembers how we use these coordinates. This is the X and Y um, axis, which runs X left to right. Y axis, top to bottom, and we can position our sprites anywhere within those coordinates for those X and Y axes. So uh, first of all, it's going to change my soccer ball size again to 50. Um, and then I'm going to bring in that X and Y. So for those that aren't familiar with this, it's in that motion block area. And then I've got my go to X and Y uh, block here. So I'm going to drag that into my script area. And just a reminder, we want it to be minus 11 on the x-axis and minus 116 on the y-axis. So that's minus uh, 11 and minus 116. Uh, what we're also going to need, it hasn't actually instructed us to do this, but of course what we're going to need is an event block. So I'm just going to bring in my when the green flag um, uh, ticked. So um, we've got that ready to go. And then next we want to bring in our football player called Jordan um, into our... Uh, into our program as well. So we just need to add in one more sprite from our section here. And I'm of course looking for Jordan. So I'm gonna type that into my search again, uh, like so. And there's Jordan. You can see again, we've got multiple um, costumes for the sprite. You can see them as I hover over this section here. Uh, I'll show them exactly all the sprites I've got to work with, but we'll look at those in a bit more decent seconds. So I've got my Jordan sprite in now. And again, we want to change the size and the coordinates so we want to change Jordan's size to 80 this time. Uh, let's just change that here first of all, 80. And again, we're going to need an event block and our motion block for that to go to X and Y coordinates on the grid. And for Jordan, we want Jordan to be at minus 63 and a minus 106. So minus 63 and minus 106. Okay, so that is our starting point for where, when we start to play this, we want all of our sprites to be positioned. Okay, so that is making sense. Um, but what we also need to bring into this is the switching of costumes. So you might have noticed when I was just hovering over to Jordan there, that um, they have multiple costumes, um, which have started to create a animation for them playing um, uh, football. So for those of you that remember us doing the uh, lessons on things like Walk in Place and Panda's Race, Panda actually had two costumes that they could um, flick between to create those animations. Uh, but certain sprites have these four different, uh, sorry, four different costumes. So this is where we can get really specific on which costume they're switching to and um, when. So rather than just being, sorry, I keep on pressing the wrong um, button. The Rather than using the next costume block, so hopefully remember that next costume, we just did one after the other in order, we can get really specific and say which of the four options it does next. We can switch to really specific as you can see in the example here. So hopefully that's making sense. Uh, again, once we click onto the sprite, you'll be able to see what each of those different costumes looks like in the menu bar to the left-hand side of the sprite. Um, but basically, this is what we need to create for ourselves now. So we need to build up the code or add to the code we've just been creating 
to do exactly this. So I'm going to start building this up in the live interface. Let's go back to that now. So the first thing I need to go to is to my looks. And so again, rather than it being next costume, we want it to be switch costume. We're getting specific on it. And the first costume we want Jordan to switch to is our D costume. So I'm just going to put that first of all. Uh, we then want to bring in a weight block because we don't want them to just switch from costume to costume incredibly quickly so we can't see. We want to bring in some delay controls so we can actually see it taking place as part of the animation. You can see um, it's going to be half a second we want for this. Um, so I need to change to zero. 0.5. Now, what I could do next to build up this full line of code here is just keep on dragging in the individual blocks. But I actually want to introduce you to something else you can do, which is quite handy. If I hover over this block here, because basically I want to um, use these same two blocks um, within the code, okay? So I can rather than drag them in, I can just right click. So what I'm doing now is right clicking on my mouse. And I've got this duplicate option. And what this will do will duplicate everything that is below the block that I've clicked on. So if I click duplicate, you now see I've got another two of those same blocks. And then I can do exactly the same again. Duplicate like so. And one more until I've got all of those um, eight blocks that I want to. Okay, so now all I need to do is change these parameters. So at the moment, I've got them all uh, Jordan D costume. Um, but I want it to be the D, B, A, D. So I can change them now to that. So it is B, A, and D, like so. Okay, that's right. D, B, A, D. Look to me. Actually, while I'm just looking at this, I did show you the slide, but just to double so you can see where you get to the um, uh, a view for yourself of different costumes. I'm on the Jordans right here. If I click this costume icon here, I can see what all of these look like and edit these if I so wish within this view here. And to get back to the code, I just hit this cross and I'm back at the code interface. Okay, so hopefully again, that's making sense what we're building up here. We're gonna want Jordan to switch between these different costumes. Um, but what we also want to do is get the ball sprite to move. So there's a new one we're going to introduce now as well. So it's, it's gonna be allowing us or enabling us to move a sprite with a glide icon, which looks like this. So this is similar to the go to X and Y block, which we've been already using, but this just creates, as it sounds, a really smooth action. So rather than it just jumping from one coordinate to another, it will glide smoothly from where it currently is to these new coordinates. And again, help us with creating that animation that we want to. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, you'll see an action in just a moment. Um, so we now want to do this to the uh, the soccer ball. Okay, so we want to uh, use this guy, this glide, sorry, block with the soccer ball. So I'm just adding this to what I've already created with the, uh, the go to x y coordinates. So let's do exactly that. So I now need to make sure I'm clicking on my soccer ball sprite here to control this. Going back to my motion block area and using my glide block here. So you can see you can actually do glide to random, but we want to get specific on exactly where they glided to. And it was glide one second to um, X of 50 and Y of 70. So let's do exactly that. X of 50 and Y of positive 70. 70 and we are nearly there so all we need to do is to start this uh program by clicking the green flag so i'm going to bring it up into full stage area hit the green flag and we'll just see how our uh, program is performing at the moment so let's do that and like hit green flag and off we go okay so i mean you can see straight away that the ball is moving we've got jordan animator kick but was it quite right? Um, I'm not convinced. I think, um, as it's suggesting in the slides, there might have been a few small pro, uh, problems uh, within that. Um, I'm sure you can see those for yourselves, but basically it wasn't really quite matched up, was it? When I'm playing that code, again, the ball is moving, but it's already moved before Jordan has really uh, kicked that actual ball. So it's not looking quite right. So we can change that as it's suggesting by bringing in a wait for block into our ball program. So this is basically now allowing us to make sure that the, the programs match up together to create the correct animations. So this is suggesting we put a wait for one second block uh, into the middle of the stock 
Goal program, so it doesn't move until Jordan has actually kicked the ball, if that makes sense. So we'll do exactly that so you can see exactly what we're talking about. So I'm still on my soccer ball program. Want to bring in a control block that's wait for one second in the middle of those two. So the ball is going to go to the first position uh, in the middle of the soccer field, then wait one second and then glide into the goal after Jordan has kicked it. Okay, so before we go to the next stage, let's just see how that uh, works now. So I'm going to press my green flag, ball comes to the middle, Jordan kicks, and now the ball goes into the net. Uh, properly in conjunction with Jordan kicking the ball. So that's a lot better animation for us uh, now. Okay, so that's the first step. But now what we're going to look at next is show and hide. So this is exactly what it uh, um, is, what it sounds like. We can basically show and hide the sprites. Okay, so depending on how we want the animation to work, it's going to be useful at some points for the sprites to appear and be visible. And then other points, it's going to be better for them to be hidden, to go away, okay? So that is what we are um, going to have a look at next. So we've got a guide on exactly what it wants us to do. So in the Sprite tab in the stage area, we again want to select the soccer ball uh, and sure, to ensure we're programming that. Um, but this is what we are creating next, okay? So we're doing a slightly different um, uh, program to what we've got at the moment. And we want to bring in that high block. So let's go back to our a soccer ball. Let's check everything looks right. It's wide 11, yeah, minus 16. Okay, it's going to bring in my uh, hide, which you find again in the looks um, section here. And I've got the show and hide icon, so I'll just bring in the hide straight away. And then next, um, oh, sorry, so we need to also, we can see what it's asking us to do is change how we're controlling this. So rather than just being clear, um, the ball being kicked once, we want it to constantly be kicked every time we click the left arrow. So let's bring in that as well. So remember, we can select lots of different control blocks from the control tab, uh, sorry, event blocks even, from the event tab here. Um, so I can bring in a key icon one from this one, uh, swap that onto here, and I can just delete my wing green flag, block clicked, and I can change this to whatever key, but we'll go with left arrow as it's described. Okay, so let's just see what happens now when we run this program. So I'm going to press green, and oh, uh, oh, Jordan's already kicked, and the ball was kicked into the goal, and it has now disappeared like we want it to do. Um, but now if I'm hitting the left, oh, it's not quite working, so is it? So I've got... Uh, on the green flag, Jordan being kicked. Yeah, she's kicking, but now I can't get the ball back because it's disappeared because I used that high block. So again, our program's not quite right. Uh, we do need to uh, think about what we need to change. So the problem, first problem, as we've just seen, is that once we've hidden the ball, it remains hidden. We can't actually see the ball once it's gone into the uh, the goal and disappeared. And also, so we, we can, sorry, we can overcome that problem by using the show block within our code as well as the high block, which I'll show you in a moment. And also, we don't have uh, Jordan um, changing the costumes when that left arrow key is placed. At the moment, Jordan is still activated just by the green flag. So we can bring in a new program uh, to make sure that Jordan's also activated by that left arrow. So it's suggesting that we can do exactly what I showed you before. We can duplicate that whole code and then change it so it is clicked by the left arrow or activated by the left arrow rather than the green uh, flag. Okay, so I'll show you this in action now. So I'm starting off with my soccer ball. So again, I've got the hide block, but I haven't yet got that show block in. So let's go back to our looks show to the start of the code so that means every time we start the program it is going to show the soccer ball sprites hopefully and we also want to activate jordan with that um left key press so as i suggested i can now right click and duplicate and i've now got the same code but i actually want it to be activated by the left key press so let's bring in that instead now i can move these code over to the when space create it and get rid of that and change this to when left key pressed as well. Okay, now I need could keep this code here as well, but I don't think I need it because I'm going to have the exact same code activated by the left arrow. So I'm actually going to delete that whole code now. So just to, do, to demonstrate a different way <coughs> in which we can um, 
edit and amend the codes that we're already working with. So now we've got both programs for so the Jordan sprites and the soccer ball sprites uh, controlled by the left arrow. So let's just see if that behaves a bit better now. So again, green flag, you see nothing's happening. It's waiting for me now to hit my left key on my keyboard, which I'll do now. And balls come in, there we go. I scored the goal, the balls has appeared into the back of the net, but I can go again, left arrow, there we go. So it's now always disappearing, but then showing again once I click on it, like so. Okay, so that program's working a lot better um, than it used to at the moment. So that is hopefully, again, all making sense on how we start to use all those different types of blocks. But at this point, you can absolutely hand over to the peoples and the children to start having a go for themselves and seeing what else we can create once they've worked through those step-by-step -step guides. Um, so the first scenario I'm suggesting is we can actually try and program um, the ball to be kicked um, in different ways, which can have different outcomes. So sometimes it might be that the ball is kicked into the goal, but sometimes the ball hits the goal post. So that's what we want to try and get the kids to program for us as a starting point. So you can see um, the examples of these happening on the screen now, but just as a street. So these, as part of the independent practice for your pupils and for your children at home, um, we want to see if they can code it to complete these two scenarios. The ball is kicked into the goal by pressing the space key and the ball hits the post and rebounds by pressing the right arrow key so depending on what key they press they'll get different outcomes on the ball so i'm not going to build this one up from scratch i'm actually going to use a pre put together program which i've got uh here it is oh let me just double check this one here it's going to load this up for you and there we go okay so we will be sharing this program with you as well. So don't worry if you want to make sure you've got this as an example. But basically for both the soccer ball sprites and the Jordan sprite, I've got two different codes for space key and right arrow key. So you can see for the soccer ball, first of all, when space key press, really similar to that code we were just working with um, before and enabling the ball to be going into the goal. But then this one on the right, you can see straight away, we've actually got two glide um, program blocks being used. So these will cause effects of the first block uh, and they want to go towards the post and hitting the post, then this one will enable it to come away back off the post into the football pitch, as you'll see for yourself in a second. Um, and then we've got, you could in theory have this set up um, as two separate programs for each, uh, as I've got here, because, uh, but because it's really doing the same thing on John's costumes, you could even think about making this a bit more um, efficient by using the any key. So that might be something that your kids think about as well. Just want to point that out, but there's no reason you can't just have both codes set up uh, at the same time. So let's just see this in action. So bring our stage area into bring a view. We can hit that green icon. So it's waiting for me to hit those presses, those key presses. I'm going to start with space, which is going to get the ball to the back of the net. So and now we've got right. And unfortunately, yeah, hitting the post and coming back. So space into the goal and right key, getting the ball to hit the post and come back. So again, hopefully that's making sense. I think the main thing to think about is how we're using these glide program blocks to cause that effect on the, the sprite itself. Okay, so that's the independent practice again. I just, I've briefly gone through that, but the kids can really get into the detail of exactly how they make that happen. And of course, start to think about how they can change it, which again is what they'll always naturally start to do. Um, so they might start to work out what they want to have a go at instead. But in case this is support, we've also got some example extension activities. So this suggests three different things that they might want to think about or change um, for their program. So they could think about um, these different scenarios, getting the program, the ball to rebound once it hits the goalpost, um, which we actually have done in the, um, the other practice, but they maybe want to look at how they can get it to hit the other post or the crossbar. Um, we can program Panda to ask Jordan to show them how to kick the ball. So we can bring in some of those speech blocks that we've looked at in the previous lessons. Um, and we can also look at how we could program Jordan to kick the ball to Panda. And of course, start getting Panda involved in the, the game as well, because Panda wants to learn how to play football. For so there's some examples of what you could do. I'm going to give an example of where you could take this a little bit different to this, because I'm sure they all make sense and you could explore those for yourselves.
But I want to give you an example of something a little bit different you could do. So I'm going to open up a another program. This one here is an example of my extension. Don't need to see say that one I've been making on. Um, okay, so what I've actually got here is three different scenarios. So I've got some code now for um, Panda to move around. I won't talk through that in too much detail yet. I've then got uh, four different examples of code for the uh, soccer ball sprite. And I've got three different lines of code for the Jordan sprite. And hopefully you've seen these are all activated again by different arrow presses. Space, up arrow, and right arrow for all these different sprites, okay? I'm not going to talk through them straight away. I'm going to demonstrate this live so you can see what happens. Basically, I've taken a bit different way, and I've wanted Panda to get involved, kicking the ball, but helping out Jordan as they're practicing. So let's see what happens in a minute. Uh, start the green flag now. I'm going to start off with my space bar. So here we go. So Panda's saying I'll help to get the ball. So the ball's gone to the net. Panda travels to the net and kicks it back to Jordan, which is very kind of him. And I'm going to try the up arrow. And on this occasion, unfortunately, Jordan's not done too great on that kick. And the ball's gone way off past the goal uh, into the crowd. But someone does uh, thankfully throw it back to him. And then right arrow, we've got the post being hit and Panda giving an encouragement, but still goes to get the ball and passes it back to Jordan. So just to run through those games, again, space is the ball being kicked into the net, Panda going to retrieve it for Jordan. Uh, the up arrow is Jordan, unfortunately, sky in that ball, ridiculously high uh, over the goal. And then right is that hitting the post, but this time we've added in Panda giving some encouragement and still going to retrieve the ball. As simple as that. But just going back to the code, Again, hopefully you're seeing straight away what we're using. But um, uh, for Jordan, it was really based mainly around, again, the, the costume changes for all of those scenarios. The ball was really similar to what we were walking at, um, looking at in the previous examples, using those glide um, uh, blocks from X and Y positions to create those different effects that we wanted on each of those presses, up arrow, right arrow, and space. And But now we also brought in Panda. So we were getting Panda to uh, also move around the screen um, to go and help you the ball. But the important thing for this was, of course, bringing in these weight blocks. You can pull weight blocks within these codes at different times. Um, same for the uh, the soccer ball as well. You can see we've got the use of lots of these different weight blocks. And that was really important to think about and experiment with to make sure that everything timed correctly within the animation for the, um, uh, within that stage area, okay? So they're the important things to think about when the kid starts to look at this. You need to think about, yes, what different positions it needs, um, when to bring the glide blocks in, and what seconds to put in see those glide blocks, but also where to use his weight for blocks to make sure everything matches up together within the different sprites, okay? Um, it's great, it's a great way of um, helping to encourage the use of debugging within computing. It's a massive part of what we all have to go through in coding and programming, learning how to uh, try something, see how it works, understand what's not working quite so well, debug it or change it to make it better and then try and again. Massive part of computing. So this activity is great for bringing in a lot of that. Okay, but hopefully that all made sense and um, uh, you're looking forward to getting that um, uh, in front of your pupils and children to have a go at. I'm sure, again, they'll they'll be able to run with that in so many different ways. They'll come up with all sorts of different ways they can expand on that, maybe even bringing in more sprites, some sound files, some uh, a lot more use of speech, um, maybe even getting the sprite to do some keepy uppies with the ball before they hit it into there. I don't know. There's all sorts of different ways they could take that to make it really complicated. Um, uh, so we look forward to hearing here and how you get on with that. But of course, before we sign off, we've got to do our review step in the form of a quiz. So always love this part. So let's take a few questions um, just to make sure we understand what we've been using today. So first question, again, just imagine to yourself what you think the answer is, and I will display the answer in a second. So which of the following blocks can display the hidden sprite? Which of the following blocks will display a hidden sprite? Is of course a safe. So we looked at before that show a block will make sure that a hidden sprite will become visible again. Question number two: When running the code, what will the sprite's path of movement be? So if you created a code with these four blocks and then run it, what would be the the rough pattern 
uh, or action of the sprite. So it's a quick scan of all these four different options. Do you think it will move in a square, a rectangle, uh, move to the right in a straight line or move back and forth in a straight line? So if you imagine the answer to yourself, just we're looking at these, it is of course D. Okay, so it will move back and forth because we're basically only controlling the X axis. It's not gonna move on the Y axis, which would be top to bottom, but the X axis here runs left to right on the screen. So it's basically gonna go from left to right, to left to right, to left to right with each of those four blocks. Okay, we've all got that one right. And then last question, when running the code, the sprite will glide four times. What is the slowest instruction? Okay, so using um, these uh, different options, which one will make the sprite glide the slowest? Okay, so which one will make the sprite glide the slowest? Fairly straightforward to think, but hopefully, We've got this, it's C. So obviously with the this section of the glide icon, this is how long it will take to get from this point to this point, okay? Um, so of course, with it being 10 seconds, that is what will be the slowest one. It will take 10 seconds to get from that point to that point. With all these are just one second, half a second, one second, and it will still do it fairly quick. So hopefully you've got all those correct. Um, thank you very much again for joining this lesson. So we will be sending you through all of those slides, uh, the full lesson plans. So I'll be giving you your full guides um, for each step of that, the um, bits of the conversation you can bring into the lesson, um, and how you would expect this path to take. So you'll have all the support you need together with the full slides and the example programs that I've been looking at there. We will be sending all of that through for you. Um, of course, when you start to work on it, any questions at all, please do get in touch with us. Um, or if you want to see anything else on what we do and how we can help, please visit our website and check out everything that we are uh, promoting on this online training course and the other webinars you can get involved in uh, via our social media channels. You'll be able to find all the details on all of those channels, but any questions at all, please do get in touch. So thank you very much again for joining. Hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. And we will see you um, next time online for session number seven. Thank you very much and bye for now.